Maybe a little bit older styles with the Tapufini and the Celesteela that people have played in previous years, but it'd be curious to see if he can grind out a win with some of these slower Pokemon. See, I'm so excited to see the Celesteela. Celesteela seems to be so good right now, and just, I mean, we just saw how the Registeel is being able to put in work, sticking around and being annoying, and I feel like Celesteela gets the opportunity to do that as well, just in different ways with something like a Leech Seed. So it'll be interesting to see how Milko is navigating this, and a favorite as well in that Garchomp. So this is going to definitely be a fantastic matchup, and I'm really excited to see how these players do. Of course, and I think diving into the game and taking a look at how it shakes out when they start playing is the best thing we can do at this juncture. Whoever loses in this one will be heading home. This is how the loser's bracket works, so it's uh, it's all or nothing for both of these trainers. Really, really important game for both to keep their runs alive. Of course, and starting off for the Cinderell run, we are going to see the Incineroar come out next to the Thunderous. And on the other side, Landorus and Regia Leckie. But that Landorus with the Intimidate, it does drop the attack on the Incineroar, but Thunderous carrying that Defiant is gonna get a nice little attack boost, which is definitely not something you wanna be seeing on this first turn. That's uh, something you gotta be wary of with the Thunderous. And I know trainers have been talking about, hey, uh, you know, do we go Prankster? Do you go Defiant? Obviously, a lot of people got very used to playing around the Defiant and stopped giving that ability uh, an activation over to, to their opponents. Knowing about this is something that the trainers really have to think about when they select their four that they're bringing in. And the Thunderous, like you said, has got the boost, might just be able to start going and, and causing problems very, very early on. I'd be curious to take a look at just how it shakes out in these first couple of turns, but I really like this Dynamax selection from Marco. Marco also looking to cause some troubles going for that Max Regia Lecky. It's not always the most common Dynamax option, but with its crazy special attack, it can just do so much damage. So offering so much pressure. Milko though, not wanting to be left out, also going for a Dynamax. I mean, this Thunderous is already has an attack through, so this seems like a fun candidate could definitely be putting up some massive amount of pressure here and that's the dangerous the dangerous part of this defiant thunderous Cineroar, fake out doesn't matter it does a tiny little bit of chip a little bit more at that critical hit but you can't flinch a dynamax pokemon so this reggie lucky getting the opportunity to fire back the big max lightning into this thunderous picking up a good amount of health but it is going to set an electric terrain up as well Thunderous, Max Airstream though, just looking to get those speed boosts and a speed boost Ooh. it is, taking out the Landorus as well. I mean, it got the attack boost from that Intimidate and is now just looking to take it out, saying thank you, I'll take that Airstream boost, goodbye. That's a really big opening turn there from, from both trainers really being able to uh, set up a little bit of what they want. The electric train going down for the Regieleki is really big and the Regieleki not taking uh, any flinches from that fake out, something uh, kind of a misstep from Milko, but that's fine. In exchange for his misstep, he managed to take uh, the, the Max Lightning and set up a speed boost. So he's feeling uh, a little bit better, I think, about uh, how that turn went after kind of the initial setback of Fake Out not quite landing. I, I like the the way that he responds with the Max Airstream. You know you've got to be boosting your speed to deal with the Regieleki. It really is the only way to, to at least try and catch up with the fastest Pokemon around. Yeah, that's the one dangers of Fake Out in this format. I mean, it offers so much pressure flinching the Pokemon, but with any Pokemon being allowed to Dynamax, um, I mean, you just saw how it went wrong here with that Regieleki being able to just do what it wanted for a turn. So, I'm excited though about this Urshifu hitting the field, but the Urshifu's look danger against the Thunders, but the Thunderous, Milko Ooh. just opting to switch it out here. Milko understanding that that Thunderous was not safe at all and having a better option to try and deal with this Regieleki. I like this adaptation. If the prediction is there, a double switch actually, if the prediction is there, this could be absolutely huge. So uh, it's a it's a bold move, the double switch, and it started to pay off. <laughs> a huge Max Lightning into that slot, but not doing anything. The Garchomp being a ground type, not taking anything. The Urshifu though, not falling for the close combat and instead with the Surging Strike. So the Spectre is going to be taking a bunch of damage, but it is going to be sticking around and I mean, Milko with the double swap doesn't get too much out of the turn, but Marco not getting too much out of it either with not being able to capitalize off of the second turn of his max. 
win some, you lose some. You switch in and you manage to get the, the Max Lightning into your ground type, that's fantastic. Definitely looking to take that close combat into the Ghost type. It didn't quite come through, took a lot of damage for the Surging Strikes. And I think you needed both to happen to, to make the, the loss of the Thunderous worth it. Losing that Thunderous during its max, especially after it had the boost as well with Defiant, is a really, really big loss um, to be able to, to take that off the field and, and not uh, really kind of go as soon as possible. So it's a big loss, and I think Milko might have accepted a bad trade deal on that one. Uh, but of course, the next couple of turns are going to really show how that shakes out. Well, to start it off, Yoshifu. Heidi in the back, the Togekiss coming out, and Reggie Alecki going for a Max Lightning to just to be cleaning up the structure here. Garchomp fire off with an Earthquake. Of course, the Togekiss swap means that that slot stays safe, but the Reggie Alecki not as much, not appreciating that Earthquake at all. And it doesn't go down, but it is going to take a nice, healthy amount of damage. That's a, a big amount of damage to land, and uh, getting the Incineroar back in with a very low impact Intimidate. Uh, clearly trying to make potential fake out play uh, just to try and buy a little bit of time that is the end of the dynamax turn for reggie alecki and i think two uh max lightnings uh forcing the thunderous away and being able to clean up on that spectre really really good use of the dynamax and that in some games is just the defining factor using your dynamax better and, and making sure you're on the field for all three turns of it does win trainers games and that Kind of puts Milko on the back foot a little bit because he only got one turn and then switched out and gave up his boost. Yeah, that was a speed boost from the Airstream, the attack boost from the Defiant, but all going to waste. But looking to make up some ground, Fago from Incineroar is going to go into that Togekiss, but this Reggie Alecki just going for a Volt Witch into this Incineroar, just bringing it down to under half and giving the Incineroar the opportunity to get some recovery back. I mean, Incineroar is hard to take down, and with those berries, even more difficult. And Marco pivoting into that Urshifu here, just looking to put some pressure on. Garchomp just going for a rock slide to hit into the Tokikus as well, and just uh, picking up a little bit of chip along the way. Uh, gets, uh, gets to make sure that it can deal some good damage to Togekiss, but that change, something that um, Milka wasn't able to swap, uh, stop from uh, you know, the Regieleki, just really kind of causing problems because you're you've got to be scared you can't earthquake that freely actually and i think milko is definitely up against it this next turn could be really impactful there's no super immediate answer to the togekiss and the urshifu obviously can can just start putting down big damage so uh this turn could get pretty nasty and i think if played right marco's combination of togekiss urshifu uh, could cause problems Iron Head, though, coming up from the Garchomp. Not a coverage move to see too often, but unable to be cleaning up that KO there. The Tokus just surviving with 4 HP and returned that Garchomp, taking close combat from this Urshifu. Tokus then getting that opportunity, fire off a Dazzling Gleam. Garchomp not appreciating that one and picking up the KO there and just a bit more of chip on this Incineroar. So unfortunate that Garchomp couldn't pick up the KO there. Incineroar just looking to pivot back out, bring the Incineroar back in, but who's in that Garchomp definitely hurts here. That Iron Head not getting the knockout really, really impactful. Uh, just that's a, a move that it's not the most common on Garchomp, and I know why it's there. It's there to deal with the Togekiss, but look at how little damage it did, and not enough for a knockout there. Um, the best bet might have been throwing out the Rock Slide and just saying, well, I can either flinch you or, or deal some super effective damage. This does pose an interesting problem, uh, just with the the combination that Milko's thrown down to and his last two Pokemon, exactly what he started to lead with. Um, but that Regieleki is still in the back and could at any point just come in and I think tidy up at the end of this game. So uh, it, this is a good pairing to have on the board for Milko, but he's got to be respectful of the, the potential Regieleki in the back. And I think having that as a bit of a trump card should get Marco uh, a, a really comfortable position in this one. Of course, he's got two good attackers on the field right now. Incineroar has the fake out, and this turn, using that properly is going to be very important. Urshifu not wanting to risk the fake out and going for the protect Tokikiss as well. So good opportunity to not take a fake out as well, kind of planning out what Milko is doing, seeing where this Thunderous is targeting into, and we see that Wild Charge attempting to go into this Urshifu slot. So Marco 
with a little bit of information going into the second turn and of course wasting that fake out is definitely valuable uh the fake out could have been so impactful there and very respectful for marco to say you know what i think you're going to be attacking me with the fake out trying to catch something just gets to learn a little bit more about the targeting that milko was going for in that turn and, and double protect really impactful there this last uh, turn of Togekiss, is, the fact it's been able to stick around is, is really important because it keeps the Urshifu safe and I think now the Urshifu can start the process of cleaning up. Uh, on the flip side, that is going to become a Regieleki next turn and as long as Urshifu is targeting properly on this one, uh, it should be good to make sure the game gets cleaned up by its partner, Regieleki. Sure enough, Surging Strikes comes out into that Incineroar is going to be picking up that KO. And Surging Strikes hits three times. There's no way this Incineroar is going to be able to stand up. So is going into this end game a 2v1. Marco with all of this control. I mean, the Regieleki has definitely taken some considerable damage, but Regieleki hits like a truck and it's so fast to boot. So I don't know if there's anything the Slutters can do in time to stop it. No, the Thunderous isn't going to be able to move quick enough to, to try and, and even get a move in. The Regieleki being the fastest thing on the field, we saw the problems it caused in the first turn of the game, right? Where it just said, actually, um, I'm going to be able to deal with you immediately, uh, just throwing down a, a bigger Max Lightning. That problem kind of comes back at the end of the game. Let's see, can Thunderous do more? That's what I want to know. And we've talked about Thunderous in, in both our games already today. Can Thunderous do more in this one? Well, it's definitely going to try as it hits the field again next to the Incineroar, but Marco not wanting to play into the Defiant, knowing the information that he has from game one, switching it up. So that Regieleki is coming back out to play, but it's going to be paired with the Tokakis this time around. Nice adaptation from Marco. We talked about, do you want to give over that Intimidate? And he, he agreed with us. No, it's not a good idea, and I don't want to give it to him. So, uh, you know, giving him that Defiant boost could have been a problem and, and just learning from game number one, not handing that over. You get a nice safe Togekiss in as well. Um, you know, the Togekiss, we've seen it with Protect, uh, could just buy a turn that way and, and the Thunderous uh, would love to target it, but I don't think Marco's going to allow him to do that so much. Oh, for sure. So I'm excited to see, I mean, we saw that Max Regieleki come out in the last game is, even though it's not really the most common Max Pokemon. So I'm curious to see if it's going to be going for a early Dynamax into this second game or changing it up. But Milko going for the Dynamax instead. Um, doesn't have the speed boost this time, or sorry, the attack boost this time around, but still looking to apply that early game pressure. If you can get a knockout, maybe you're able to force in the Landorus, which then gives you the Defiant boost a little bit later on. And the best way to try and get the knockout, of course, would be to, to throw out the Dynamax, so really uh, good adaptation. I think adaptation is, is maybe a little bit much, but just playing to what you think is your best win condition. Uh, very, very wise. And a change up from Marco, not quite giving him uh, the, the Regieleki to boost. I think there could be a potential play here to try and catch that fake out. And this Max Tokakis in front of the Thunderous is definitely scary. The Regieleki getting to fire off the Thunderbolt, picking up some really good damage. And the Tokakis taking this airstream from the Thunderous quite comfortably here. So Thunderous does get a speed boost, but it's already pretty low. And Tokakis can also deal some massive damage. We see it often as a follow me Pokemon, but a lot of them with kits to be going for those critical hits, it can hit for quite a considerable amount of damage. And it's going to go for that max Starfall. And I think it's just taking it out here. Uh, the Togekiss Dynamax is something that's always been in and out of the format, a uh, number of people kind of thinking about it. The Thunderous isn't quite knocked out, it's bought exceptionally low, but it's easy enough for the Regieleki to tidy it up in the next turn, so uh, really not in the best position to, to try and fire back. And the Togekiss as well, probably having access to be able to try and match some of those speed boosts. So yes, Thunderous was able to get one down, but there's absolutely no reason that Togekiss can't max their stream itself and, and just uh, try and set those up. So a lot of good options here. I think, and this change up in the Dynamax, maybe trying to catch the potential fake out into Togekiss, uh, just really, really wise uh, from uh, Marco's side and, and a really good showing of just how versatile and adaptable the, this, this team can be. Oh, for sure, these Pokemon don't get Dynamax too often, but definitely putting in the pressure. This Thunderous 
feeling that pressure, just opting to go for that max guard. Reggie Alecki looking to just fish for a KO as well as a speed drop on the Incineroar with that Electro Web. And now this Tokus has every opportunity to be raising the speed on its own end as well with a big max airstream into the Incineroar, not wanting to deal with that critical hit to boost and is just going to be eliminating it altogether. Oh, I think Marco is playing this one very, very well and playing into the lead he had has just been so, so impactful. Being able to deal huge damage on the first turn, be able to keep the Regieleki safe. I mean, Regieleki is doing so much without even getting Dynamax this turn and, and could just be in a position just throwing down Electro Webs, letting Togekiss throw up Max Airstreams as well. It could get to be a very clean sweep from just this fantastic lead choice from Marco. You know, switching it up, definitely valuable going into this game too. And now that this Thunderous has used up its max guard, um, it's going to be in danger of this Electro Web from the Reggie Alecki. And sure enough, big damage onto the Spectre, but more importantly, taking that Thunderous down. So Thunderous did get to stick in for all three turns of the max this time around, but I mean, still only did as much as it did last time, unfortunately, between going down in the max guard. And with all of these speed boosts and the speed drop, this Tokakis gets the opportunity to go for that max airstream onto the Spectre and taking that down as well. well. Two and a half turns, really. It didn't get to attack on its third turn of Dynamax. But the Thunderous, once again, just not being able to fire back. And this Regieleki does a lot of damage, even with uh, just the Electro Web. I mean, it's so powerful. Uh, it's going to be posed a bit of a problem by the Garchomp, but on the flip side, to make sure that the uh, Regieleki doesn't go down in vain, you've got your Togekiss, which has the speed boosts and has a single target Dazzling Gleam now, that doesn't even need to worry about, uh, you know, having any problems caused, so uh, really kind of nicely played here, I think, from Marco, that lead, putting in so much work, that lead, taking three of the KOs, and I think Milko just knowing, hey, I didn't quite have the right team for this, and, and calling it quits.